God's name is Yahuwah, or Yahweh. Jesus' name is Yahusha, or Yeshua. The Holy Spirit's name is Rahakadesh. I come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. John 5, 43 Dad, you alone are worthy of all the glory and praise. I know that even though mankind is going through one of the strangest times in the years I've been on earth, however, I know that you are really not shocked by the state of the world because nothing is impossible for you. So today I am proclaiming that you will be glorified through this pandemic and your name will be praised throughout the earth. Dad, when we all look back at this moment in history, let us be filled with joy, peace, and happiness as we remember the revival that you are sending forth right now. Thank you for shining your light on your message today so that those that have ears to hear will hear and eyes to see will see. Oh, Dad, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for drawing this hurting world back to you in the name of Yahusha. I pray. Welcome to you again today. God loves you and so do I. All I'm saying is the good news is God is in control of the winds, the waves, and the storm. He is in control of what's trying to stop you from reaching your dreams, purpose, and destiny. God only has to shift the winds and instead of holding you back, they will push you forward. The storms were meant for your harm, but God will turn them into your advantage. God is still saying you will get there. God is still on the throne. God is fighting your battles behind the scene. God is assembling the right people. See, what God has promised you, it will come to pass. I believe we left off saying I have two questions for you. Just two questions for you. Number one, will you trust God when you do not see any signs of things improving? Number two, Will you stay in faith when you are hearing those small voices in your head telling you that it is never going to work out? Please remember this. You cannot be moved by what you see. You have to be moved by what you know. And what you know is the Word of God. Make what you know the Word of God. Do not let the storm, any storm, cause you to lose faith in what God has promised. All I'm saying is God is faithful. All I'm saying is God has seen your dreams that you haven't even fallen asleep to have yet. Let's begin. I am the Alpha and the Omega. That is the first letter and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. The beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. The Almighty Yahuwah, God is the Almighty God. We cannot understand this term, Almighty God. When we look at the creation, we get a little idea of what it means to be the Almighty God. 
our human minds can't comprehend the magnitude of Yahuwah God. And in all honesty, if we could comprehend and understand God with our minds, He wouldn't be God. You can't fit an infinite God into a finite or limited mind. Isaiah 66, 1 Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Heaven cannot even contain God. All I'm saying is, what makes you think our minds can contain Him? Heaven cannot even contain God. No human can say what he looks like. But the scripture has rightly told us that God is a spirit beholding his glory and power over the heavens and the earth. He sits on his throne in heaven where the saints, the 24 elders, and the angels bow before him in awe, in worship. God, in his fullness and power, created the whole world. He has been in existence since before the creation of the world. God didn't begin when the beginning began. God began the beginning. Genesis 1, 2 And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. This passage has given us a clear indication that Yahuwah God was before the world began. Hence, He's the Almighty that no man can question. In our text, we shall examine five great lessons about God. God is spirit, John 4, 24. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The level of your operations in the spiritual realm solely depends on your level of intimacy with God. We are not entitled to come to his presence without our spirit aligned with the Spirit of God. God is not just our Maker, but is a Spirit. And to whoever wants to operate in a godly dimension must be spiritual, worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. And so those that are in the flesh cannot please God. Listen. Those that are in the flesh cannot please God. Those that are in the flesh cannot please God. The relationship between man and God is spiritual, so the spirit of the man must be a regenerated one. The term worship simply means absolute surrender as a result of an encounter. Worship is not the solemn song we sing. It goes beyond that. All I'm saying is worship is a place. There are different ways to worship God. We can show some acts of worship by giving offerings, dancing, clapping hands, sowing, and the likes. But could it be possible the best way to worship God is by surrendering our lives to Him? All I'm saying is you cannot come before Him as a carnal person and expect spiritual results. Only those that walk in the Spirit are expected to operate in the spiritual with power and vigor. God is love. 
John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We have a full message on John 3.16 that will give you a real clarity on John 3.16. The word love means giving, sacrificing, and services to humanity. For God so much loved the world that he sent his only son to reconcile us back to Yahusha Christ. Hence, man has gone astray from the beginning. All I'm saying is your mind is not big enough to fully grasp his love for you. He knows everything about you. He knows when you sit down and when you rise up. He knows every single one of your thoughts, even before you think it. You will never surprise him. He knows what you are going to do before you do it. He knows all your desires. He knows what's in your heart. All I'm saying is he sent his only son for you. He sent him down to earth knowing that he would sacrifice himself and die for you. He did all that just to save you. He did all that just so you could have the chance at eternal life with him when the world was drowning and it desperately needed a savior. All I'm saying is if our greatest need had been information, he would have sent an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, he would have sent a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, he would have sent us an economist. But since our greatest need was forgiveness, He sent a savior. He chose you. But do you choose him? He loves you. But do you love him? When you were lost, he found you. When you were broken, he mended you. And when you cried, He comforted you. You have no idea what you mean to God. He only wants the best for you. You are precious to him. He would never want to harm you. But yet, yet, you hurt him. You know he hates sin. But yet, you act this way. God has given us his laws with the best interest at heart and all he gets from us is disobedience and then when something goes wrong, we blame him. If only you would listen to him. If only you would hear his word. If only you would obey his commandments. There's so much heartache you could have avoided. So many tears that needed not to be shed. If only you would listen to him. God would never steer you wrong. God is not the one out to get you. How could he be when he sent his only son to save you? God shines his light into our life. But all we ever do is run to the darkness. You choose to love a human more than him. And when they hurt you, he is the one that fixes you. When they lie to you, he is the one that holds the truth. 
And when they leave you, it is he who will always be there for you. God is indescribable. No mortals can truly describe how God is. However, the beauty and greatness of a man can't be compared with that of God because we can't tell how big or tall he is. 1 Kings 8, 27 But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have built. All I'm saying is, what a God. Because of his awesomeness, we are indebted to him in showing and giving him what he truly deserves. However, he deserves our worship and praise. In the scripture, we have been admonished for not showing our profound gratitude for his creation, the extent of which he can cooperate and the levels of his supremacy. The Bible speaks of his hands so that we can understand that he is very powerful. The Bible sometimes talks about his mouth. But that is in order for us to understand that God speaks. The Bible speaks sometimes to the eyes of the Lord. But that's so that we can understand that nothing happens outside of his scope and vision. God sees everything and everywhere all the time. No man has seen God. No man can see God and live. See, our bodies can't handle his glory and power. The great creator, the great God, God is everywhere. Jeremiah 23, 24 says, Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 24, can any hide himself in secret places that I cannot see him, saith the Lord. Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord. All I'm saying is God is everywhere all the time. God is everywhere at all times. If you go into the deep waters of the ocean, God is there. If you fly high on an airplane in the sky, God is there. When you are living in the depths of hell, God is there. God is everywhere at all times. We cannot understand such a God as this. God is holy. In his words, holiness is mentioned several times as it becomes the only criteria to see him as he is. Whoever comes to the Father must approach him with a sincere and pure heart without any blemish. See, God's eyes can't behold iniquities. One of the reasons why prayers are not answered is because of sin. In this dispensation, God demands our clean hearts if we must come to his presence. Holiness is the surest way to see heaven. It doesn't please God to see his children ensnared by the evil tactics of the devil. Psalm 24, 3 and 4 who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. God is powerful and mighty. The supremacy of God and majesty of God cannot be described. Hence, he holds all power in his hands. It doesn't matter how powerful any man or spirit could be. 
but it's still limited when it's compared to that of God. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? God is not a man. God is never weak. His power never fails or frails. He does not need time to gather his resources. He does not answer to no man, nor any spirit. God is supreme. He is supreme. He does wonders and makes his name to be praised among all nations. It is through the name, it is through the name that demons bow and call him the Almighty God. No one is to be compared to him. With his power, he holds the whole world in his hands. This shows how powerful God is. The sovereignty and supremacy of God have given us a clear indication that no one can be seen as him. His creation speaks for him and therefore let no man take any glory. All glory must be ascribed to God for who he is. Oh, he deserves to be worshiped. Now, there is a wonderful thing about God. His personal spirit can be known. You can become his friend. He has had many friends in the past. We see in the Bible that people have become the friends of God and he becomes theirs. Please, I beseech you, I beg you, please open up your heart to him and he will become your friend. Obey his laws and he will be your friend. All I'm saying is trust him with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and he will become your friend. Let us pray. Father, thank you again and again and again for your word today, your powerful word every time you speak it. Bless the listeners. Let them have heard and let your word have penetrated their hearts today. In the name of Yahushua, I pray. Mm -hmm.